module 11 concepts of population sample and confidence interval section 1 theory of confidence interval and confidence interval of the mean this is a very important uh, module so please uh, pay a lot of attention to it so you know what the confidence intervals are ci can be calculated for a number of statistical uh, uh, measures like mean or proportion or standard deviation or binomial uh, proportion and so on and so forth. So it tells you how precisely you have determined the statistic. So eliminate, uh, you know, uh, it is basically an estimate of the population statistic. So uh, how precisely you have determined the mean in comparison with the population from which it has come from. So population mean and sample mean might not be same. So how precise is your determination? So that is what the confidence interval is all about. So this is about the confidence interval of the mean. Precision depends on the confidence level. So CL of 99 is more precise, you know, uh, estimate than 95, which is better than 90. So, uh, you know, accuracy is increased when you increase your, uh, uh, the confidence level. So, uh, yeah, remember it is not exactly precision, so precision is merely the decimal points but more accurate term is called accuracy because you know uh, accuracy is more important than the precision in statistics as you see that. So the confidence level uh, that is exactly that is what, so if you have a lot of sample then uh, probably you can make a better guess about it, so the confidence level will be higher. So if your level is at 99 then whatever you are going to say is more or less accurate so that is what that is why people always go with the higher confidence levels for which 95 percentage is quite nice SEM is also uh, tells you how precisely you have determined the population uh, you know mean but its confidence level is only 60 percentage which is rather very low so that is why statisticians always say that instead of going with SEM it's always preferred to go with 95 percentage CI so CI is a numerical presented in as a sample mean plus or minus the CI written as lower limit to the upper limit. So example uh, if 95 percent CI is, uh, is 16 and uh, you know mu is 51 then the range is 45 to 57. So it is always X to Y so lower limit to the upper limit. Uh, you know of the confidence interval. So usually the confidence interval is presented graphically as an error bar for which the you know you can you can uh, think of a column bar at it uh, which is uh, uh, with the height of which is at exactly at the mean. So plus or minus so both ways there will be error bars popping up and down. So these error bars are the confidence interval 95 percentage confidence interval. So how do you report that in your uh, paper? So the way to report is like 95 percentage confidence interval in bracket 45 to 57 bracket close contain the true value. What does this statement means? So the true value means the mean of the population. You have no idea how much is the population mean is because you are working only with the samples. So at 95 percentage confidence level you can say that the true population means falls somewhere between 45 to 57. Again remember this is 95 percentage is the confidence level. So that means that for every 100 such measurement 5 values will not include the true population uh, mean so, you know. So there is still a chance of uh, uh, mistake in this measurement. So 95 percentage confidence level is not accurate still but it is much better than lower confidence level like 60 percentage as used by SEM. So here you can see that in this diagram the true population mean while you know you are sampling uh, you know a subset you are sampling out and then you calculate the mean so that is a bit higher than that while another subset has uh, value a little bit lower than that. So the true population mean estimate from the sample mean is never accurate. So somehow you have to present uh, the level of uh, accuracy of your sample measurement by doing this. Uh, confidence interval. So how do you determine the confidence interval of the mean? So to detect it is of course there is a formal test you have to do. There are certain assumptions on detecting the confidence interval of the mean. What are the assumptions? 
first of all the samples have to be random. So that means clumped cells you know are not homogeneous or proteins uh, you know patients from the clinics again if you choose one of this clinic and then look at the patients there then again that is not a uh, you know homogeneous is a heterogeneous group. So uh, of course uh, you know uh, uh, these two are heterogeneous so a convenient these are known as convenient sample rather than the random sample. So you have to make sure that the samples are really random. So if you are planning for a sample collection you have to randomize the sample collection prior to doing this confidence interval estimation. So observations have to be independent so not twins or uh, no siblings or no family. So if you do that then definitely it is not random. So again left eye versus right eye again that is actually linked up right. So that is also not a random one. Accurate data the data have to be accurate of course that is uh, pertinent to any kind of statistical test that we are going to do and uh, it has to be approximately Gaussian that is uh, one of the uh, major limitation of detecting this confidence interval of the mean though the power is very high it is applicable only for the normal distributions. So you have to do a normality test to make sure that the distribution comes from a population that follows approximately Gaussian distribution. Let us discuss the theory of the confidence interval. So the confidence interval of the mean is calculated via T distribution. T distribution is a probability distribution. So it also have got a characteristic bell shape. So the T distribution connects the population to the sample. So to, to, to draw the T distribution you need to have a large population and you, sh you should actually sample from that large population multiple times and then you have to plot the value of the t. So the t is calculated by the formula m minus mu multiplied by standard error of the mean that is standard deviation by the root n is standard error of the mean. So SCM is multiplied with m minus mu. What is this m? m is population mean while mu is a sample mean. So this works only for simulated data sets where you know precisely the population data sets and you can do multiple times a sample random sample from the population and then you can calculate the t for each and every such uh, you know uh, samples uh, you can calculate the t. So you see that uh, the sample mean sometimes is lesser than the population means while sometimes it is greater than the population mean. So more or less you know it is going to follow an approximately Gaussian distribution. So uh, you know uh, that is why you are going to uh, use this formula to calculate the T distribution. So T distribution in the sense that you can also present that in a table form. So these are known as the T table, the threshold values of the T table. So you which you can look up for the threshold values. So what is the meaning of this T? T means that many times the standard deviation from the sample mean. For example, a T of 1.96 means it is 1.96 times the standard deviation of the sample mean. So from the sample mean it is uh, at 1.96 away. So it is at the 95 percentage confidence level. So that is actually uh, the correspondence is 1.96 is uh, you know correspond to the 95 percentage confidence uh, level. Sample mean could be more or less population mean. So it t could be plus or minus but fairly zero. So some values are less than the pop true population means while some uh, sample means are higher than. So if you add on it is kind of zero. That is why majority of this T will be centered around the center and then tail will extend to both directions. So that is why you are going to get a characteristic bell shaped graph uh, with this uh, uh, T uh, distribution in it. So it is one of the good way to convert an approximately Gaussian to the real Gaussian but of course the caveat is that it works only if you know the, the true values of the population. So I told you the T distribution connects the population to the sample so, you know so that is why the, the means you are subtracting the population mean minus the sample mean multiplied by the standard error of the mean. So the mean is equal to the m plus or minus that is a sample mean plus or minus the width of the confidence interval. So the width it can be calculated as a constant from the t distribution 
multiplied by standard error of the mean. So, this is the most important practically useful formula. If you know only the sample mean and how can you actually convert that into an estimate of the population mean. So, the sample mean plus or minus t multiplied by standard error of the mean in which the t is a constant from the, the student t distribution that we will discuss it later. So, this is this is actually taken from the earlier equation on calculating the t. So, the uh, the steps I did not uh, uh, say that, but anyway you can actually uh, if you are interested you can uh, look up how this formula is derived. This formula is nothing but the population mean is equal to the sample mean plus or minus the width of the confidence interval and the width of the confidence interval can be calculated that is the, the red one, uh, the t multiplied by s uh, divided by the root n. So, s upon the root n is nothing but standard error of the mean. So, c i of the mean is first we have to calculate the width of the confidence interval for which you can calculate by t multiplied by s by root n. So, that is nothing but standard error of the mean. So, t means co constant from the t distribution. So, the t depends upon the degrees of the freedom. Remember, df is nothing but n minus 1 and the confidence level. So, what level of the confidence are you looking for? Usually, we go with 95 percentage confidence level, but you can of course, you can go higher 99 percentage or lower 90 percentage depends upon you. So, for example, we have a data, the marks data n is 24. So, the degree of freedom is 23. So, 24 minus 1 is 23, n minus 1 is the degree of freedom. And t at 95 percentage confidence level, you can simply look up a t distribution table and then look for uh, that the value of the t constant. So, you can see that uh, you know the columns are nothing but uh, the confidence levels, while the rows are nothing but the degrees of freedom. So, uh, we have to go at 23 and then slide all the way to 95 percentage of the confidence level, then you are going to see the constant value is 2.0687. So, this value you have to plug into uh, you know the, the equation that is t multiplied by s by root n. So, let us do that with our uh, uh, the data of the marks right now. To calculate the confidence interval of the mean, first let us write down what is known from our data set. So, we know the mean, so that is nothing but the sample mean, mean or m is equal to 12.81. We also know the standard deviation that is st, we can write the standard deviation is equal to 4.905. We also know that n is number of students in the class is 24. So, the degree of freedom is, is equal to 24 minus 1, that is why it is n minus 1 definitely, so it is 23. Now, I was also told you in the last, uh, uh, you know, in the, in, the, in, the, in the screen, I have shown you that it is actually depends upon the degree of freedom and the confidence level. So, if you want to calculate 95 percentage confidence interval. So, in this case it is 95 percentage then you will have to look up 94 percentage confidence level at the degree of freedom 23 to get the t. So, the t star or the, the constant from the t distribution we have already found out the t star is 2.0687. So, from this information is what is known here we can easily calculate the confidence interval. So, first we have to calculate the width of the confidence interval. So, let us calculate the width of the confidence interval here. The formula used is, is actually w, the width is equal to t star multiplied by s by root n. So, this s by root n is nothing but the standard error of the mean that I have already explained to you. So, standard error of the mean multiplied by the t star is a width of the confidence interval that extends to both the directions of the mean. So, that is how you calculate the, uh, the, the 95 percent uh, ci. If you want to calculate 90 percent ci or 99 percent ci, only difference here is the t constant will be different uh, from the t distribution table. So, let us calculate the width of this one by just by plugging into this equation here. It is t star is 
of 6 8 7 then multiplied by we have to multiply with uh, the s s is nothing but the standard deviation it is 4 point let me write here in the in the next line here multiplied with 4.905 and divided by the root of 24 so it is not 23 root n so n is different from the uh, degree of freedom so it has to be 24 so if you solve this one you are going to get the width will be 2.07 so this is the width only and this width extend to the both directions of the mean so the mean here is 12.81 so the extent to the both directions so the two limits of the confidence interval are the first one is the lower limit is 12.81 that is the mean the sample mean subtracted with 2.07 this is the lower limit to the upper limit the upper limit is just plus it so 12.81 plus 2.07 so this is what is called the the mean of the uh, confidence interval of the mean so this if you can solve it you are going to get uh, the values are 10.742 14.88 so this is what uh, the the confidence interval of the mean so what does that actually mean so if you plot it in a graph like manner this is the mean so this is the x and y axis so this in y axis let us say that this is at uh, uh, let us say 13 we have 15 here and we have 11 here so this is exactly at the mean so this is actually the mean so this is a column uh, plot you see this is the column plot of the marks so this is 12.81 kind of near 13 fine so this will have a plunger on the top as so you can also write on the bottom as well at 11 and 15 so this is the error bar of the confidence interval of the mean so this is how to plot the, conf the, the confidence interval means that the true population mean which uh, we do not know right we know only 24 uh, people so the true uh, the, uh, the population means fall somewhere between these two error bars 95 percentage of the time so if you do that uh, the true population mean if you calculate sometime it will be like this and sometime it will be like this sometime it will be like this and if you do this repeat for 100 times and 5 times it will not be inside this for example one time you will get like this big value or sometimes you are going to get a small value so all these are the possibilities of the confidence interval of the mean so you should never uh, outlook these uh, you know these possibilities so all these you have to, to consider while uh, you know while uh, interpreting this value what the confidence interval of the mean is all about and now what if the two confidence interval overlap or do not overlap so for example in this case the confidence interval is like this then definitely these two are overlapping so the two confidence interval overlap means that you can never make any conclusion about it but if the two confidence interval do not overlap for example in this case the confidence interval is like this these are 95 percent confidence interval so this and this are do not overlap at all so this you can make out that this uh, you are significantly different so this is a valid conclusion if the 95 percent ci of the mean do not overlap so that is uh, how to calculate the 95 percent ci of the mean let us calculate the standard error of the mean then coefficient of variation and coefficient of dispersion for our blood glucose data set remember we have already calculated the variance the variance had been 442 0.5 that is a variance and we have also uh, calculated the standard deviation this is just the root of the variance that is 21.04 and the n was 5 and uh, sample uh, mean that is basically m is equal to 94 that is the mean so all these values we already know now from this how can we calculate the standard error of the mean so st to calculate first the standard error of the mean uh, for sem calculation sem the, the formula is actually quite simple so formula is that it's basically you know sd the standard deviation 
divided by root n. So, this is the formula to be used for to calculate the standard error of the mean. So, here just plug into that one standard deviation is 21.04 divided by root of the n, n is 5. So, it is root 5. If you solve it, you are going to get an answer as 9.4. So, the 9.4 is the standard error of the mean of our blood glucose, uh, the random blood glucose data set. Now, let us calculate the CV. So, CV is nothing but CV is coefficient of variation is equal to standard deviation divided by mu. So, multiplied with 100. So, sometime you multiply and express that in percentage. So, just you can substitute these values here. Substitute is the standard deviation is 21.04 divided by mu is 94 multiplied with 100 will come out to be 22.37. This is the uh, CV that is coefficient of variation of this data set. Finally, let us also calculate the CD that is coefficient of dispersion of the data set. So, this is nothing but SD square upon mu. So, it is very similar to this uh, uh, equation here it is SD upon mu, here is SD square upon mu. So, SD square is 21, this is equal to 21.04 squared divided by the mu, the mu is no, nothing but 94. So, if you solve it, you are going to get an answer of 4.707. So, this is, this, uh, this is something called CD that is coefficient of dispersion. This is also called VMR. VMR means variance to mean ratio. As you can see that VMR is quite high. So, that means that this data set has a lot of variance and uh, you know, so that is why you cannot call it as actually uh, a random. So, it probably it is actually a, a non-random uh, data set. So, that is what the VMR is all about. So, and SCM is 9.4. So, remember that SD and SCMs are not same. SD scatters the variability of the data set while SCM, the standard error of the mean is about the precision of determining the sample mean in respect to the population mean. So, these two values you cannot uh, uh, actually uh, substitute for one another. If you want to uh, graphically present the SEM, so you can simply present that as a graph style. So, for example, uh, like let us draw one graph of uh, two few uh, SEM readings here. So, for example, this is y axis and x axis here. So, let us say it is uh, uh, 10, 15, 5. So, the first value is at 10, then another value is at a little bit less than 10, right? And now this is the, the uh, standard error of the mean extending to the both directions. In this case, standard error of the mean extends to the two directions. So, what is the conclusion that these two groups when the standard deviations overlaps? So, if the standard error of the mean is not standard deviation, but it is SEM, standard error of the mean. So, SEM overlap means that it is not significant. The results are not significant. That is the valid conclusion. So, what if these error bars are standard deviation? There is no conclusion. So, standard deviation it just captures the scatter or the variability of the elements. So, if it does not overlap in the case of standard deviation, again, there is no valid conclusion. And in the case of SCM, if it does not overlap, for example, this one has got a very small SCM. So, this and this or this and this do not overlap. That also makes no sense. So, we cannot make any valid conclusions if SCM do not overlap. So, if the SCM do overlap, so that means that these are not statistically significant. So, in the next example, let us say that biost in the biostatistics class, marks obtained by the girls and boys, that is mean plus or minus standard deviation. Uh, these are actually the girls 16.1, n is equal to 49 and the boys is 14.2, n is equal to 49. So, just with these values, uh, you know the mean and uh, n, of course, you can plug into the equation to calculate the standard error of the mean that is st upon root n. 
and once you calculate the standard error of the mean you just need to multiply it with a constant from the t distribution that is t star to get uh, the 95 percent ci so you can do this uh, you can plot it separately to see that if the the 95 percent ci do overlap or not overlap so based upon it you can infer make a valid inferences statistically you can check it out without even performing the p test uh, you know p uh, the the formal statistical test like f test or t test so even without even calculating the p values you can just inspect the graph to make some conclusions about it so confidence interval of the mean is that you know it is actually n multiplied by the standard error of the mean that is s by root n so n or t star is a constant from the t distribution so one a good approximation is 1.96 especially if the data set is very large so one property of this confidence interval is that if you increase the sample size then confidence interval will keep on decreasing the width keep on decreasing exactly like the standard error of the mean and unlike that of the standard deviation and also you see that it's 95 percentage ci that means that some values are outside the uh, you know definitely there is a five percentage uh, error in the chance just by the chance that uh, you know that even though you are putting this limits as 95 percentage still some values could be uh, uh, so sometime that the true population mean could not fall into this 95 percent ci for example in this upper diagram you can see that these are the raw data with uh, the mean and in it uh, marked in the the line while the lower panel says that the true population mean uh, within 95 percent ci is kind of fine at out of 9 out of 10 9 do have it very nicely predicted but one is not in it so that means that error bars do not contain the true population mean the here the true population mean is uh, in the dashed line so this possibility you should never discount it so how do we calculate the uh, confidence interval of the mean in the graph pad prism it is actually very simple while excel there is no shortcut for it there is no formula for it so in the graph pad prism the main window you can see that the descriptive statistics or column statistics of which one of the option is 95 percent hci just you have to mark it and click ok then the result will be displayed here and that res uh, the result you can uh, you can present it in a uh, you know of course you can uh, uh, make a column scatter with 95 percent ci everything uh, in a matter of clicks in that software so on this one this diagram you can see that the column scatter plot of uh, uh, you know a large sample definitely will have will squeeze the ci the width will be much lesser for the larger sample than a smaller sample so the smaller sample will have a large width of the 95 percent ci yet another approach for calculating the ci is through something called resampling or bootstrapping method what is that so it is very intuitive method uh, you know for this is also a non-parametric approach so how do we do that it's a rank based approach let us say that we have a subset of the marks only we have uh, uh, five marks here first of all you have to make it in ascending order right and each value you are putting in the rank so first rank is number two second rank is uh, score nine third rank is score 11 and so on till fifth rank next is that you know make a new subset by picking five random integers one to five so this data set has only five ranks so you, let us say that you put one in one sheet of paper two in another sheet of paper and put all, all these one in a box and you shuffle it then you simply pick up five such a way that after each one you are putting it back so that there is actually uh, you know chance that same number may be repeated again and again you know so repetitions are allowed to make a new set for example our new set is having one three three four five so what does that mean these are only ranks so first rank you have to pick up that value third rank you have to pick two times fourth rank you pick only once and fifth rank you pick uh, another time to make a subset of that sample so this sample is called pseudo sample i've already covered you what the pseudo sample it is so this pseudo replication the way to make this uh, replications from one sample itself is called pseudo replication you can make it any number of times so you just need one sample and with this one sample you can make 
uh, millions of times. So, it is a computationally expensive uh, task that is why it is called bootstrapping. So, once you do this one lots of time let us say 500 times you made the pseudo replicates and each time you calculated its uh, you know you have to calculate uh, its mean. So, once you calculate the mean you have to order it from lowest mean to the largest mean. So, once you have the pseudo replicates do the same uh, process again and again. So, that is why you are making a large number of subsets from just one uh, sample. So, randomization of just one sample is what is being achieved here. So, each time you are doing is called pseudo sample. So, it is an iterative process from just one subset of the sample. Once you have it all you have to do is to uh, rank order it in ascending order for example and you have to pick up the two numbers. So, first one is 2.5 percentile and then 97.5 percentile. So, what is so special about these two numbers? Because 97.5 minus 2.5 is 95 percentage. So, 95 percentage of the whole scores will be within 97.5 percentile and 2.5 percentile. So, these scores are do correspond to the uh, you know the standard error of the mean. So, it is a very intuitive manner and uh, multiple studies have confirmed that this is ex excellent uh, method uh, which is almost identical to the, the approach which is based upon the T distribution which I have already told you. So, this is a bootstrapping or computer intensive method and extensively used in phylogenetics and genomics data that uh, resampling method for example, to calculate uh, bootstrap proportions uh, you know of the phylogenetic tree. So, in summary the sample is a subset of the population and in most cases properties of the population remains unknown. So, we use the samples as a proxy to make the inferences about the population from which the samples came from. 95 percentage CI informs us how precisely we have calculated the respective sample statistic with respect to the, the true population mean. So, it is related to the standard error of the mean or SCM is approximately 60 percentage CI and 95 percent CI is approximately twice the SCM. So, it is different from standard deviation as standard deviation captures only the scatter of the data set. 95 percentage confidence interval of the mean can be calculated by using the formula mu is equal to m plus or minus t star multiplied by standard error of the mean or s by root n. It is possible to calculate 95 percentage CI of the mean without making any assumptions about the distribution of populations from which the samples came. The approach is through resampling or bootstrapping. Manual calculation is almost impossible, but can easily be done in a computer. Thank you for watching.